Hello and welcome back. Tonight on the bench we're going to revisit the Colt Model 1907. Now the Model 1907 is a very important step in the evolution of the Model 1911. Uh, we see the grip safety on here for the first time and there's also a chamber indicator on this pistol, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Now the Colt Model 1907 actually evolved from some changes that came out of a model 1905 that was tested in the model or excuse me in the 1907 uh, pistol and revolver trials now the pistol and revolver trials of 1907 had manufacturers such as Smith excuse me Smith and Wesson Savage Luger and of course Colt now at the end of the um, pistol and revolver trials there were only two manufacturers left and that was of course Colt and Savage now from that their pistols were deemed to be far enough along in development to warrant further testing in the field so ordinance asked Colt and Savage uh, to bid on 200 pistols, what they would cost to make. Now, Colt um, offered up the model 1905 for 1850 apiece, as it was in the pistol and revolver trials. But they also offered up a modified version, as we see here, for $25, and that is what Ordnance accepted. Now, they ordered 200 of these, and those shipped March 17th of 1908 to Springfield Armory. And, <clears throat> excuse me, those went to three different troops of cavalry soldiers. Now, this, and also the uh, Presidio, uh, or excuse me, the School of Musketry at the Presidio, in Monterey, California. Now, th um, this particular pistol, serial number 40, went to Troop K of the 10th U.S. Cavalry, uh, Fort William McKinley in the Philippine Islands. So it has been through the ringer. Um, I think the finish shows that a little bit. But anyway, still a very significant piece of history right here. Now, there were actually more than 200 of these pistols made. There were five more that were ordered by General Crozier, who uh, was the chief of ordnance, and those shipped in April of 1908. And then there was two of these that were sold commercially. Now, we'll go ahead and we'll go on to the field trials and what happened there. The initial results of the field trials, they were very disappointing because of a multitude of broken parts in the Colt. Um, they malfunctioned, they jammed a lot, um, they jammed from bullets catching the rear of the chamber, uh, the firing pins broke, and then the sears broke also. They proved to be very fragile, and that would uh, lead to uncontrollable firing. They would discharge like an automatic, and uh, just a multitude of problems. Now, Colt, you know, wanting to win the contract for the next automatic pistol of the United States military, got on it right away to try to fix these problems. They uh, redesigned the sear so it was a little bit stronger and they sent it to ordinance to distribute to the field to have them replaced in the field. And then they got three pistols back from uh, the School of Musketry and they worked on those and were able to come up with some different design changes and then they recalled the other pistols back to the Colt factory and over the summer of 1908 they retrofitted those with the other parts that were recommended. Now one of the first things that we see that are different with this pistol now is when Colt recalled it, excuse me I want to grab a pointer here, they lengthened the tang on the grip safety here so now if a cavalry soldier was controlling the horse with uh, one hand had the reins in one hand and they had the pistol in condition one they could safely decock the pistol one-handed by doing that move taking the hammer down onto the extended tang now and then being able to depress the uh, grip safety pull the trigger and gently release the hammer back down so that was one of the changes that we saw and then of course there were some internal ones the firing pin the sears they went through and made sure everything was the way it needed to be now we'll go ahead and we'll start to take a look at the pistol itself here now this is a modified 1905 so we still have the grip angle of 84 degrees which had a tendency to 
have shooters shoot a little bit low. Uh, we see in the model 1909 this goes to the 74 degrees which is of course more ergonomically correct. Now we'll also notice on this that this has the big wide grips of the model 1905. Now this of course is all hand checkered so this was all done by people with files. Interesting to see these hand craftsmanship in these old pistols. Now we'll also notice on this we have an acceptance stamp from uh, Springfield Armory. This was Major Kenneth Morton right here, the KM, his acceptance stamp of these pistols. And so we'll just go ahead and continue to look at this. Now the British Model 1905s all had these staple shaped lanyard loops on it and this Model 1907 has the uh, same staple shaped lanyard loop. Now we'll also notice that the magazine is released here from the bottom of the pistol. That will change later on and then as we move along we also see that this slide is removed off the back of the frame. We still have the uh, button up here to push the uh, recoil spring in and then this is of course moved with the slide wedge out the left hand side of the frame and uh, we'll go ahead and pull this off real quick so we can take a quick look at the pistol inside here let me zoom out real quick move my notes here and we'll go ahead and field strip this very gently and you can see the inside of a Colt model 1907. Now here's the classic parallel ruler design of John Browning for uh, these early automatics where we have the two link pins up here and uh, the barrel drops back like that. And then you can see just everything else going on in here. We'll take a quick look here. Now we'll see if we can get in there and see with enough light. Well, we won't be able to see it very well where our chamber indicator is here on the front of the pistol. Or excuse me, the top of the slide here, we have the chamber indicator that pops up when there's a round that depresses on this little button right here. Let's see if I have something here. Hold on very patiently for me while I grab my little plastic pick here. Okay, so there you can see what that looks like when that pops up when a cartridge is against the breech face there. Alright, we'll go ahead and put this back together and continue looking at the pistol. Make sure the barrel's down as we slide this on and then make sure slide block is in the correct position and there we go back together now as we look at this pistol you can see here on the other side we still have as in the model 1905s the extractor here on the side and then um, just look around at it and you can see we have the grip safety here it's all hand checkered here on the back right there and then our hammer, of course, is also hand checkered. You can see that in there. And then we'll try to give you a look at these old sights. You can see that blade sight up there. Just how small a sight picture that was. But anyway, there you go. Uh, revisit of the Colt Model 1907. See what one looks like. Very important step in the evolution of the Colt Model 1911. And there you go. I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for watching and have a great day.